what's going on everybody this is dk dynamite and today we're gonna be talking about the new missions and map update coming to dmz some crazy boss leaks and another season two reveal definitely stay tuned but before you jump into that be sure to hit that subscribe button down below drop a like and let me know down below in the comment section what will you be playing first on ashika island when it does drop on february 15th will it be resurgence dmz or possibly even ground war since support for that mode previously leaked out a good two months ago but i do love the fact there are a lot of options for the brand new map coming to warzone 2 and exactly what modes you could play on the map itself we need more variety like that for future map releases as well but i am glad we got more marketing as of today for season two hopefully we end up getting some type of teaser dropped every single day leading up to the february 8th blog post we did get a reveal of the cover art for season two with a very interesting theme behind it i'm not sure as to why rose and nova are on the artwork alongside ronin in previous call of duty seasons for mw19 cold war vanguard we typically only see all the new operators showcased in the new cover art but it looks like Modern warfare 2 is changing things up a bit but we do see ronin in a returning operator from mw19 who was also previously leaked to be returning at some point in season two now what's funny about this though is that this is actually different from the leak cover art which did pop up a good two months ago along with the leak for ashika island and we do see ronin still holding that sword i know they reused one of those pieces of art that leaked out previously but some of the other ones featuring the castle behind ronin did get changed a bit and what's also strange is that earlier this afternoon they actually posted the wrong artwork and then deleted it a good 10 to 15 minutes later followed by reposting the newer and better artwork which i think does depict season two that much better i'm not sure what it was about the first artwork post that just didn't resonate well with me it didn't really look complete or rendered out or finished i'm not much of an artist but i know the newer artwork they posted does look a lot cleaner for our brand new season now what's also pretty interesting is that the rose skin that we see in the artwork does have a shadow company patch somewhere on the outfit and i'm like wait a second rose left shadow company according to the in-game lore for the character and she also was absent from building 21 since building 21 does feature shadow company as the ai that is completely infiltrating the area so with that in mind i'm like did rose rejoin shadow company or was it something that got overlooked by mistake when they were working on this artwork let me know how you feel about what could be this plot hole down below in the comments now for those that missed out on this information from a previous video of mine i just wanted to recap real quickly for those that also don't have twitter infinity war did confirm that following the fan feedback to the dmz wipe coming in season two they will no longer be resetting our insurance slots with the star of the new season you will still end up losing a lot of your faction mission progress i believe almost all of it as well as your contraband keys and even some of your weapons that you have saved in your locker but you will be able to keep your insurance slots which i completely agree with because for those out there that went ahead and did all the work with maybe all five tiers of the three factions you deserve to keep your three insurance slots that's a lot of work that you actually put in to unlock those to begin with i see no reason in resetting those although i do understand giving everybody a fresh start with no keys no weapons in your locker I do believe you also keep the rewards that you unlock from doing the previous faction missions But with the idea that we're getting a massive overhaul and update to DMZ in season 2 I do get why they want to reset some things But they don't have to go full force escape from Tarkov and get rid of everything Especially considering Tarkov seasons last what six months to a year Whereas Call of Duty seasons only last a good 60 or 70 days So it doesn't really make sense to be that harsh on the DMZ community So bravo to Infinity Ward for confirming this over online Now with the reveal of the attack map we got yesterday for Ashika Island, it was confirmed in the caption of the tweet that you can drop into Ashika Island in both Resurgence and DMZ on February 15th. Again, they didn't mention Ground War just yet, so maybe support for that is coming during the mid-season. I would honestly say there's no rush in adding support for all three modes on day one for Ashika Island. I wouldn't have been mad if they saved DMZ support for Season 2 Reloaded at some point in March. Although we do need more content in the game, DMZ has technically gotten the most amount of content compared to other modes since Season 1's launch on November 16th. I also understand DMZ is the heart and soul of COD 2.0 right now. At least that's what it seems like. So they want to give it the healthiest updates possible each and every season. And I do believe though, Sheikah Island for DMZ will play a lot more similar to Almazra than it does Building 21, right? It'll play like a smaller scale Almazra with all the different missions you could do, all the crazy AI infiltrating different areas of the map, but it will still offer that faster paced PvP action, which I'm a big fan of. And you find a lot of that over in Building 21, considering how claustrophobic that map really is. But I do want you to remember this caption that we have in a tweet talking about the castle point of interest. You have to infiltrate quickly, pass the tower's defenders, and reach the hidden space. I do believe that has different meaning for both Warzone 2 and then DMZ. I think in Warzone 2 we are going to see AI on this map. Obviously it's a smaller map than Almazra, so we won't see that much AI or a similar amount, but we still will see some AI probably walking around certain areas. But when they say hidden space, that gets me thinking that we're going to end up getting some type of secret rooms or keycards we could find 
or some easter eggs that are similar to what we've seen before in previous warzone maps but when it comes to dmz i do think that those tower defenders and that hidden space has more to do with the leaked bosses which i talked about in a previous dmz video which you also might have missed but let's recap that a bit since new information also surfaced about what we might be seeing in ashika island for dmz so it looks like the trend with dmz right now is to see at least two bosses per map on almazar we ended up seeing the jug through the weapon cases quest and then we ended up seeing the chemist through those radiation zones right the jug and the weapon case quest i covered that in a video that i've linked down below the chemist was holding an m13b and a really cool blueprint for it i also covered that in a separate video but then building 21 also offered two bosses one was velikin who's a part of shadow company who we end up killing he's holding a grenade launcher which you can also exfil with and keep for future dmz deployments and we also have the wilson which was a pretty difficult boss who ends up dropping some decent loot a black access key card for one of those secret rooms but what about our japanese themed dmz map coming out ashika island right so we have leaks that came out a good i think month ago and the leaks do suggest that we're seeing two new bosses in dmz with season two one is named pyro and one is named trapper those could of course be placeholder names might not be their final names that we end up seeing in the map but with the trend that we're seeing two bosses per dmz experience it's no coincidence that we're going to also see pyro and trapper here on ashika island i want to say that one of those bosses is probably for the weapon cases quest if we see that return again on this new map and the other boss could be someone who's just holding a secret blueprint or is holding a key card or something of that nature but i'm really looking forward to covering all of this in some separate videos when season two does release on february 15th now new audio lines did also get found by the usual suspects on twitter who leak early call of duty information and the voice lines were found for the boss known as pyro and the voice lines do suggest that he's gonna be wielding a flamethrower and he's gonna be housing himself in a certain area so go back to that caption i just mentioned about having to infiltrate past some tower defenders and reach a hidden space maybe that hidden space is where this pyro boss is going to be at and this pyro boss is likely going to be in that castle point of interest i mean the castle point of interest seems to be the heart and soul of ashika island right somewhat near the center of the map so there's no doubt in my mind they're going to put one of the bosses over there and the other boss will probably be in a different location that could be any one of these points of interest that got confirmed but i think with the audio leak about someone holding a flamethrower that's going to be insane i mean hopefully we can then exfil with it like we did with the grenade launcher or the m13b from the other two dmz maps and we could then deploy with this flamethrower in almazra or then building 21 that would be crazy so that's something that i'm sure you guys are really excited about i mean i'm all for dmz having exclusive weapons that you can't use in multiplayer battle royale but weapons that you can bring across the three current dmz experiences let's get it now as i was recording this video i just was wondering who would be in control of ashika island would it be shadow company and would it serve as a direct follow-up to building 21 well a blog post just dropped about the new map in which it does mention that the latest missives indicate the isles being used as a hub for the ultra nationalist connie group including the transportation of chemical and biological weapons current intel obtained by redacted suggests noxious weaponry is being shipped from a suspected biolab facility in almazra is that a reference to building 21 possibly being in almazra that could be the case it also mentions originally planned as a resort destination development on ashika island was halted in the mid 1990s due to redacted and the sterling work of redacted so i wonder if that's a reference to what could be black ops 2024 which is rumored to take place in the 90s as well but publicly the reasons remain undisclosed since this time travel to and from the island has been heavily restricted it also mentions recently intercepted communication suggests that elements of shadow company under the leadership of redacted have taken control of the isle seemingly on the hunt for members of the connie group while the location appears abandoned there are whispers on the wires of connie operators remaining active in the conflict zone regardless of where you drop in extreme caution is advised so this map could answer some questions as to who is leading shadow company is grave still alive is it shepherd is there a tie-in to akatala or the macro post credit scene with the no russian teaser lots of questions could be answered here in season two something else i was also thinking is that building 21 should at some point become playable for multiplayer right i really do wonder how they're going to rotate maps when it comes to dmz will they end up having this rotation system similar to rebirth and fortune's keep where there's only certain days you could play building 21 dmz other days you could play ashika island dmz whereas almazra just remains playable forever i wonder how that's gonna work and if that's the case right if they're gonna be rotating those maps in and out that's fair for ashika island since you'll always be able to play resurgence warzone on that even if you can't play dmz on certain days but building 21 is only playable in dmz so at least convert that into a 6v6 map maybe make the second floor a 6v6 map or take a small space on the first or third floor and turn it into a gunfight experience something like that would make a lot of sense especially considering ashika island would be playable in potentially three different modes right resurgence dmz and probably even ground war so gotta show 
also building 21 some more love as well a map that didn't get marketed all that well with season one reloaded and a map that has been gate kept to a very weird extent right they gate kept the marketing on it the release date of it how to access the map when you could play the map so we gotta show this map a lot more love in a future update but lastly as a reminder as well we got this confirmation in the recent blog post about dmz that ashika island will offer brand new missions and they also mentioned that building 21 will offer new missions so i'm wondering if that means some side quests that are exclusive to the maps or will these be faction missions or tiers that get added in that you can only do in one of these two dmz experiences i mean season two is also going to be fixing crashing adjusting mission difficulties so you can get insurance slots a lot faster improving spawn points and nerfing ai so there's a lot of massive changes coming to dmz in the next two weeks to the point where i do think people out there that might have dropped off or stopped playing the game or got bored are really going to be intrigued by what is being offered on february 15th but that is about it this has been dk dynamite leave our thoughts down below in the comment section what are your thoughts on the new missions and map updates coming to dmz in season two how are you feeling about the crazy boss leaks and the other season two marketing we got earlier this afternoon really hope you've enjoyed and peace out everybody